You're about to watch the very last video of this course. We hope you enjoy them. We suggest for you to keep on watching and practicing your language. Hi, I'm Kai Nagata. I'm a television journalist based here in Montreal, Canada. Hi, I think English students should be required to speak English all the time. Do you want to give a recommendation or an opinion about this? Stay and learn how. Giving recommendations and opinions. When you think something is a good idea. Cyclists should be required to wear a helmet. Pet owners shouldn't be allowed to walk dogs without a leash. People ought to be required to end parties at midnight. When you think something is absolutely necessary. Laws must be passed to control the noise from car alarms. People mustn't be permitted to park motorcycles on the sidewalks. A rule has to be made to require cycling lanes on city streets. Something has got to be done to stop littering. In this lesson, we will use models plus B plus past infinitive to give recommendations. When we give opinions, sometimes these opinions might be stronger than other times. When we think something is a good idea, we use should and ought to. And when we think something is absolutely necessary, we use must and have to or have got to. So if I present these two sentences to you, are you able to understand the difference? Number one, cyclists should be required to wear a helmet. Number two, cyclists must be required to wear a helmet. Very good. The first sentence is an opinion, whereas sentence number two is absolutely necessary. It's pretty much a law. Hi. I want you to give me one reason for and one against about the following ideas. The students should not be allowed to translate or speak their native language in class. Type your reasons on our discussion box. It's pretty much a law. Hi. I want you to give me one reason for and one against about the following ideas. The students should not be allowed to translate or speak their native language in class. Type your reasons on our discussion box. Hello, Guadalupe. How was your weekend? Hi, my weekend is fine. I'm a little tired because I uh, I have been to work. I mm -hmm. don't eat my sentence. It's okay. <laughs> but uh, on Saturday, I have work. On Saturday, you worked? Yes. Mm hmm and what time do you work on Saturday? Uh, in the morning. All morning. Excuse me? Only in the morning. Yes, only in the morning, but uh, it's unusual in my job. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So usually it's only Monday through Friday. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And today or this Saturday, what happened? Why did you have to go to work on, on Saturday? Because uh, I uh, work in a NGO. Mm -hmm. uh, this Saturday we have a um volunteer volunteers uh, uh workout. Okay, like an activity for the volunteers. Yes. Okay. How do you say capacitación? Training. Ah, okay. Uh, training. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm training for the volunteers. Ah, okay. And you are responsible. Yes, I'm responsible to take uh, the photos, uh, 
recording the um, the how uh, the volunteer feel because this material is sent to Korea. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. uh, in Korea, uh, Korea uh, mm -hmm. sent us uh, the racing. I think racing is it's okay, right? So, Korea sent you the what? Ah, uh, sorry, uh, Korea sent the funds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, so that's why you have to show it to Korea. Mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Maximo and Anna, how was your weekend? Hi. Hello. In my case, it was nice. Nice. <laughs> Okay, thank you for the details, Anna. Very nice. <laughs> I see Hannah is very good at communication. Wow, Anna, wonderful. Yes, teacher. Okay. I, I, I was a nice uh, weekend. Uh -huh. I, I had to do many, many things. I had to, to went to the church, went to the supermarket, and I had I had to cleaning my house because uh, the last weekend I was sick. I didn't have clean my house. And, uh, okay. and this weekend, yes, I have to clean clean my house. And and I I have to do a many many things. I understand. Okay, no problem. Sometimes it happens, especially when you are sick, you don't want to do anything. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm glad that you are better and I'm glad that now you are connected. Thank you everyone for connecting. Um, today is the, or uh, this is our last week. We only have four classes and then we finish this course. Today, we're gonna to be looking at and starting unit five. We're going to be focusing on giving recommendations and your opinions, especially with words like should or could or must. These are the most important. First, we're going to watch a little bit of the grammar, and then we're going to see some context. So here is the grammar. Hi, I think English students should be required to speak English all the time. Do you want to give a recommendation or an opinion about this? Stay and learn how. Giving recommendations and opinions. When you think something is a good idea. Cyclists should be required to wear a helmet. Pet owners shouldn't be allowed to walk dogs without a leash. People ought to be required to end parties at midnight. When you think something is absolutely necessary. Laws must be passed to control the noise from car alarms. People mustn't be permitted to park motorcycles on the sidewalks. A rule has to be made to require cycling lanes on city streets. Something has got to be done to stop littering. In this lesson, we will use models plus B plus past infinitive to give recommendations. When we give opinions, sometimes these opinions might be stronger than other times. When we think something is a good idea, we use should and ought to. And when we think something is absolutely necessary, we use must and have to or have got to. So if I present these two sentences to you, are you able to understand the difference? Number one, cyclists should be required to wear a helmet. Number two, cyclists must be required to wear a helmet. Okay, let's take a moment and pause. What is the difference between those two models? When we start to use the words like should and must, what is going to be the difference? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Maximo. Should, should, should be is used when the statement is a good idea. 
and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, must be is used when the 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 idea is turn obligation okay. like ob like obligation okay pretty good idea maximo excellent let me put it one more time so that we can all see in this lesson we will use models plus b plus past infinitive to give so here is like what maximo says to give recommendations this is your opinion your opinion is not a law is not that it must be done this is my opinion recommendations when we give opinions sometimes these opinions might be stronger than other times when we think something is a good idea we use should and ought to so there we can see a good idea but it's only an idea this is ah, my opinion i like this idea we can use should or ought to. and when we think something is absolutely necessary we use must and have to now there's the difference must and have to are necessary similar to what maximo said like obligations right this is necessary oh you have a fever you have a cough you have that ah uh, you must go to the doctor this is necessary to go not my opinion it's required this is the idea for must and the difference with should or have got to so if i present these two sentences to you are you able to understand the difference Number one, cyclists should be required to wear a helmet. Number two, cyclists must be required to wear a helmet. Very good. The first sentence is an opinion, whereas sentence number two is absolutely necessary. It's pretty much a law. Hi, I want you to give me one reason for and one against about the following ideas. The students should not be allowed to translate or speak their native language in class. Type your reasons on our discussion box. Okay, so it's, is it better or is it clear the difference between should, must, have to, and ought to? It's clear. Okay. Good. Then we're going to watch a small video talking about Canada. In the video, they're talking about Canada. And I want you to listen. What are some of the opinions or some of the necessities that they mention? The topic is Canada and cycling. Let's see what they say. Canada, and I'm also a lifelong. You're about to watch the very last video of this course. We hope you enjoy them. We suggest for you to keep on watching and practicing your language. Hi, I'm Kai Nagata. I'm a television journalist based here in Montreal, Canada, and I'm also a lifelong cyclist. Right now, cycling is getting more and more popular in Montreal, with 10% of all commuters getting to work by bike, like me, and city officials want that number to increase. More bicycles means more bicycle traffic, and that means sharing the road. There's lots of opinions about how pedestrians, cyclists, and drivers should act and interact in the city. Let's find out what people think. Is there anything Montreal could do to improve things for cyclists? Yeah, well, I think the city should try to expand the system of cycle paths. One thing I learned this morning is that one shouldn't drive against traffic <laughs> because that's a problem. Sometimes there are corners uh, where drivers just cannot see you coming and so you should really try to avoid driving against the traffic if possible. What advice do you have for cyclists in the city? Cyclists should have their own bike lane and drive towards the oncoming traffic because they will be able to better see what the others parked cars are doing, whether they're driving or parked, the cyclists will have more control. What do you think drivers ought to do to help keep cyclists safe? 
Drivers should always check their rear view mirrors before opening their doors so that they don't hit a bicycle that's coming up behind them. Do you spend more time? Okay, let's see what are some of the things that you already heard. What do they say? What are some necessities or recommendations that they give for cycling? Do you want to listen one more time? Yes, one more time. Please. Okay, let's listen one more time. No problem. Hi, I'm Kai Nagata. I'm a television journalist based here in Montreal, Canada, and I'm also a lifelong cyclist. Right now, cycling is getting more and more popular in Montreal, with 10% of all commuters getting to work by bike, like me. And city officials want that number to increase. More bicycles means more bicycle traffic, and that means sharing the road. There's lots of opinions about how pedestrians, cyclists, and drivers should act and interact in the city. Let's find out what people think. Is there anything Montreal could do to improve things for cyclists? Yeah, well, I think the city should try to expand the system of cycle paths. One thing I learned this morning is that one shouldn't drive against traffic <laughs> because that's a problem. Sometimes there are corners uh, where drivers just cannot see you coming and so you should really try to avoid driving against the traffic if possible. What advice do you have for cyclists in the city? Cyclists should have their own bike lane and drive towards the oncoming traffic because they will be able to better see what the other parked cars are doing, whether they're driving or parked, the cyclists will have more control. What do you think drivers ought to do to help keep cyclists safe? Drivers should always check their rear view mirrors before opening their doors so that they don't hit a bicycle that's coming up behind them. Okay, so what are a couple of the things that they mentioned? Maybe the information said that people uh, about 10 percent of people in montreal use uh, cycles but mm -hmm. the problem is when the side or gener generate gen generate traffic because when the cycle across the corner maybe uh, stop the traffic and maybe the recommendation i don't know i don't remember the when the cars, when the driver, the cars open the door, uh, they have to, to care with the cycle, maybe. Okay, very good, Anna. Very good listening. That's right. So they're talking about the drivers. They're talking about the cyclists when they're turning the corner. Very good. And what do they think? Do they think you should drive? against the traffic or with the traffic? Mm -hmm. Guadalupe, what do you think? What did you hear? The recommendation um, is with the traffic or against the traffic? Um, I understand that uh, I didn't understand exactly but the men uh, say that I don't understand if the community or the drivers or 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 someone uh, should spend uh, money creating cycling blinds uh, because these can avoid uh, the traffic uh, because the people is against uh, the traffic and the drivers should be careful uh, not to hit. Uh, the cyclists when as Anna said mm -hmm. uh, when open doors ah very good that's right they did mention very good Guadalupe they say always check the mirrors when opening the door because the cyclists poof you can they can crash into the door okay great let's listen continue listening what more information do they say what more information do they give us 
Do you spend more time driving or riding a bike? Driving. What do you think Montreal could do to encourage cycling as an option for people? Uh, maybe education, maybe some restriction to driving downtown. So maybe making it harder for drivers. Right, right. that's the nature, the human nature. What advice would you give people who are cycling with children? There should be a law that says all children starting from age six should be educated on the rules of bicycling. What do you think of the idea of kids wearing bike helmets? I think they should, but a lot of them won't. What do you think the city could do to make cyclists even safer in Montreal? Um, I think it, it would be best if bicycles and buses were not on the same street. Why do you think that? Because they're not compatible. The bus is very large and we're uh, very small and not protected, but we drive approximately the same speed or on the same path. What do you think cyclists should do to help keep themselves safe in traffic? Be more aware of both automobiles and pedestrians. I think uh, there are ways in which sometimes we cut corners in terms of moving through traffic, um, particularly moving traffic. I think cyclists need to be aware. Okay, let's take a moment. What else do they say? What other information are they giving us? The people shouldn't cycling with kids. Mm-hmm. They start talking about the children. Very good. No cycling with kids. What about the children? Should they wear helmet? No helmet. Education? No education. Morena? Oh, yes. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, yes, I'm going to give my opinion about the cycling in Montreal, I think. Mm -hmm. and it has a different kind of advantage and disadvantage because there are so many bicyc bicycling getting into the, maybe between the, the between, okay, go through the, the line of the car, but sometimes the dangerous is when they open the door and maybe the, the cycling come, maybe could, or could, uh, could be fight it or hit. Okay, all right. Yes, that's one. They, they, uh, one of the, uh, an accident with the cycling, with the bus. They say specifically with the bus, right? That maybe because the, they go in the same and it's very easy for the bus to hit them. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Another one is um, when the people, okay, let me check here. Okay, no problem. Maximo, did you want to say something? Yes, teacher. She recommended the over the children the education about the roles of cycling. And what, what was the recommendation about the rules? What did she recommend? I don't know, teacher. Okay. I don't get okay. it. No problem. Good. The woman said that one of the recommendations is that after age six, after six years old, the children should be educated like in the laws and the rules for cycling, like driving a car. When you want to drive a car, you have to go to classes and receive the rules and laws. And the same for the children for cycling. Okay, good. Let's listen, continue listening. What is the last part? Here is the last part. What do they say? What do you think when you see cyclists riding around with headphones in? I don't think it's the best idea. Uh, you have to be alert. Um, you don't often need your ears when you're cycling, but every once in a while, you hear something that indicates something that you didn't see 
and I, for safety reasons, that I think, you know, I'd like to listen. I'd like to bike and listen to music too. But if you're going to do that, I think you should do that in a park. What advice do you have for cyclists in the city? People should never wear Walkmans or iPods or whatever uh, while they cycle because a lot of cycle safety has to do with listening. What advice would you give people who are cycling with children? I think cycling on the sidewalk is fine uh, with kids. Uh, I think most pedestrians are at ease with it. Uh, you know, look here, look at how wide this sidewalk is. If you have young children, who are just learning to cycle. I don't see anything wrong with cycling on the sidewalk along here. What's your impression of Montreal as a city for cycling? Cyclists should take a bigger piece of the city and play a bigger role in the city. And I think that uh, drivers and even pedestrians should relax a bit about cyclists. Cyclists are good for cities. Wherever bikes and cars share the road, people are going to have opinions about how they ought to interact. Montreal is no exception, and we may not have solved all the problems yet, but we're working on it. I'm Kai Nagata, reporting from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Okay, what was the final part? What were the last opinions and recommendations that they gave? Uh, the cyclists. Uh, need to be alert and they shouldn't uh, have uh, uh, headphones. Okay. Good. Why no headphones? What is the reason for not having headphones? Because they need to be alert with the cars or uh, the world around. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. They say not always, but sometimes they need to be alert and listen. Very good. Well, this is the introduction for our unit. As you can see, we are listening and learning how to give recommendations and opinions with ought to, should, have, have got to, and must. Are these four okay? Do we understand the difference? between the words ought to, should, have got to, and must? So, so, or it's clear the difference? No, teacher, for me, no, it's clear. And no. okay. ought to and should, and should. Is different. Uh, what is the different teacher? For which ones, Anna? How to and okay. should. Okay. Good question, Anna. No difference. Is that easier, Anna? Is the same. Exactly, it, Anna. It's the same. It's your decision. What what do you use? So as an example, I'm going, I'm writing in the chat to help you, Anna, and to help everyone so that everyone can see it. Okay. Um, okay. So as we can see in the chat, should and ought to are the same. And must and have to are the same. So as an example. I can put, you should eat breakfast every day, or I can put, you ought to eat breakfast every day because it's the same thing. It's no difference. They are synonyms, no complications. The same like the doctor. The doctor can tell me, you have to lose weight, right? This is mm -hmm. what the doctor is, uh, the almost an obligation, right? You have to lose weight. Or the doctor can tell me the same, the same meaning, you must lose weight. Mm, okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Check Good. Nice. Great. Anybody else? Any other questions?
No. No? Okay, perfect. So in this moment, we're going to go to our first practice. The first practice using today's grammar, should, ought to, must, have to, is in 5.2. In 5.2, we have many different sentences. You can see we have eight sentences. What are we going to do? Like the example. We have number one, people, space, to use cell phones while driving, allow. So we are going to use the correct model. The model we have to decide, is it should, shouldn't, uh, must, mustn't, have, have to, could, which is the correct model. And then we are going to complete it. So people to use cell phones while driving. Oh, so I think it's this one. People shouldn't, and then I have to put in the correct form. Shouldn't be allowed to use cell phones while driving or in the long form. Contractions or long forms are okay. Should not be allowed. So with your partner, you're going to read the sentence and you're going to complete it using one of the models that we learned today. Should, ought to, must, or have to, to complete the sentence in 5.2. Is that okay? Yeah. It's okay. All right, good. There are eight sentences. So we're going to have... Uh, just a little bit of time to make sure that we can finish it, okay? So we'll have six minutes with our partners to complete it. Hi. Morena, Maximo, what happened? I can't listen. In. Hi. Okay. Now? Hi. Hi, Maximo. Now, yes, now I can listen to you. Okay. Morena? Ana? Hi, Massimo. Hi, I Ana. To Morena? Only you and the teacher. But okay. Morena, not yet. Yeah, I don't listen to Morena. Morena? Hi. Can you see the, the screen? Morena and Anna? Yes, I can see. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Number one. In right apartment, uh, people, this can be obligation too, but in negative, people, mm, 
<laughs> have to have not allow to have pets. Mm. Have to people have not allow it to I'm not sure. Mm. People had not, but we don't use the verb be. Have not be. Mm -hmm. Had not or must. Must not be. I'm not sure. A teacher. In this case, it's mm -hmm. okay. Must not be. Or have not be. No, remember, have not is not correct. Is must not or have to. Uh, must not. Ah, yeah. okay. Must not allow. Okay. No, no, you had it correct. Must not be allowed. Ah, mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Must not be. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Five scientists um, have have mm, mm. cell phone cell. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The the three ocean was okay. Should Jump people long, should not eat should be. Okay. Yes, uh -huh. And the second jump. one, jump people shouldn't. Shouldn't. Uh -huh. Shouldn't be. Get. Shouldn't be. be. Permit. Permit. Get permit. Yes, permit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The uh, number, number three. Companies. Companies. Mm. Ah, maybe it's hard to. It's an obligation. Mm, not necessary. Mm. Is Addis is. I'm afraid here. Sure. Oh. Can be true. Because it's our opinion. Should not. Shouldn't. Be passive. Laws shouldn't be passed to ban the sale. Huh? Should and. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't be passed around the sale of hand. The seven, the sale of four products. Four, four is like four is a food or is like a hair, but a wrong animal. The sale. Uh, oh, for products, uh, sell food product. Must, must be, not, must not be permitted. Mm -hmm. Something do the stop just for saying open so late. <laughs> Teacher, can you hear me? Hello? Hello, Morena. Okay. I'm so sorry, teacher, but I had so inconvenient with my device. Ah, okay. okay. That's why I couldn't log in from my, cell, um, from my computer and I'm from my cell phone, but I don't know what happened because I... I hear you, but you can hear me. No, we couldn't hear you. Yes, and that's why 
Ajá, puedo ya enfrentar inconvenience. But uh, I, I want to say, or I want to ask you if I'm going to make some exercise more. No, uh, no, no. Uh, right now we're going to check. That. Right now we're going to check together. Uh, Don't yeah. Worry. Um, yeah, because uh, that for this inconvenience, I'm going to uh, give me log out for a moment this day. Okay. Okay, More, no problem. I understand. Okay, thank you, teacher. Thank you, More. Have a great night. Okay, great. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. Um, we are checking a couple of the answers I saw with your group. We're going to fix them. So first, let's take a look at a couple of the mistakes that I saw. The first mistake that I saw, very good for one group, is the spelling. Some groups are spelling the negative in this form. They are putting should, apostrophe, and T. This is not correct in English. In English, it's the apostrophe is after the N. So the correct is shouldn't, apostrophe, t, to have shouldn't, okay? The second part, if you see, when you use the verb to be, the verb, look in the example, the verb is not in present. We do not use the verb allow. We use the verb in past participle. So as the example, people shouldn't be allowed to use their cell phones while driving. I, I mentioned this because if you put in the answer, is not going to be correct because the writing is not correct. So we have to make sure that the writing is correct so that your answers are correct. Let's take a look at number two. Let's try number two together. Young people to get married before age, uh, before age 15. What do you think would be the appropriate form to complete it? Ought to. Ought to. To be. To be. Permitted. Okay. Now, Maximo, I want you to translate that into Spanish. I want you to translate the sentence to Spanish. Go ahead, Maximo. It's okay. Tell me. What is it? What does it say in Spanish? A la eh, a las personas jóvenes. Yeah, uh -huh. okay. Uh -huh. Deberían permitirles uh -huh. casarse antes de los 15 años. Okay. Is that what you think, Maximo? Mm, no. No. Ah. So maybe not ought to. What would be a uh -huh. better answer? Shouldn't. Ah, uh, okay. Now, I want to make sure that we understand the difference. Uh -huh. Ought to is correct for grammar. It's mm -hmm. correct for grammar. But when you translate and you make the sentence logical, we mm -hmm. maybe not the best answer. Okay. So remember, the grammar is correct. The is correctly the grammar, but maybe not the correct idea you want to transmit. Okay. Okay, good. Let's try number three. Who's got number who wants to do number three? Uh me. Mm -hmm. Companies uh, should be required to be working work period breaks should be required to give workers periodic breaks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Very nice. Who's got number four? Think it in. Who, who wants to try number four?
Okay, okay, Guadalupe. Uh, people shouldn't uh, be allowed mm -hmm. to have pets in high-rise apartments. Okay, perfect. So, people shouldn't be allowed I'll fix it in just a second. All right. Who's got number five? Who's trying to do number five? Scientists shouldn't. Shouldn't be permitted. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't. Shouldn't be, be permitted. permitted. Okay. To use animal for research. Very nice. Number six. Maybe number seven is an obligation. Love have have to. Uh huh. Have to. How to how to, to be passed? Okay, to be passed. Passed. Good. To ban the sale of handguns. Ban is. Ban is not permitted, is a block. The ban is a block. Mm -hmm. Good, what about number seven? Uh, the sale of poor products mm -hmm. shouldn't be permitted. Okay, no problem, shouldn't be permitted. And the last one, what is the opinion? The last one, no idea. No problem. We are going to go ahead, Anna. Um, <laughs> I for me it's obligation too. Okay. So something, what do we use for obligation? Some something must must to to be doing. No, must to be what is the uh, do does no <laughs> do. Be, uh, I don't know what is the ah, done. <laughs> All right, <laughs> there you go. I forgot the expression. No problem, no problem. <laughs> so, let's take a look. Very good. So, as we can see, it is about our ideas. We can use different grammars, right? Some of them are correct, some of them not. So, for example, here. Um, young people must not be permitted or mustn't be permitted. Why? This is not spelled correctly. This is not correct, the spelling. But if you use the contraction, the computer has it wrong and you have to write this. Okay. Now, shouldn't be because it's your opinion. Must not be because it's the law. Like in El Salvador, uh, is the law. Must not be permitted if the person is a strong like obligation ideas okay here companies we can use remember if you can use should you can use ought to this is the idea but the same be required number four the negative very good shouldn't be allowed okay or if you like the pets you can give your opinion in positive the next one Ah, shouldn't be permitted, we can use should not be permitted, shouldn't be permitted. We have a lot of options, okay? Or must not, depend how you feel about it. And the same here, have to be passed, or we can use maybe not have, laws must be passed or must not be passed. It is correct, have to be the same meaning as must. But in number six, we do not have the option to put in both of them. 
number seven is correct shouldn't be or the positive should be. We can use depending on our opinions and feelings. And the last one, similar, must be or a change of what you think. Now, what is the most important? The most important is that you understand that the grammar is going to be correct. The difference is the meaning that you want to communicate. You can use should, you can use shouldn't, you can use must, mustn't, ought to, eh, have to. All of them are correct, but they have different meanings. So for example, for me, maybe I have a small opinion. I use should. Maybe I have a big opinion. I use must. Maybe I feel strong for the negative. Then I say mustn't. This is going to be the difference when you use the grammar, the different vocabulary. Is that okay? Okay, teacher. Okay, good. So we're going to continue on for the next part. Here in 5.3, we're going to learn about tag questions for opinion. Now, tag questions are very easy because we only check information, not ask for information. As an example, I check Maximo is married. No, I ask if Maximo is married. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's watch a small video and see what I am talking about. 5.3, we are going to be introduced to tag questions with the video in 5.4. Ready to keep on learning? Great. Pay attention to the use of tag questions for opinions. Health insurance, child care bills, rent. Now that I'm going to school and only working part time, I have a hard time making ends meet. Health insurance is really expensive, isn't it? Yeah. My company used to pay for it when I was working full time. And child care isn't cheap, is it? No, it's not. After I pay for rent and groceries, almost all my money goes to pay for my son's daycare. Colleges should provide free daycare for students with children. I think so too, but they don't have any services like that at my school. Okay, so I want us to pause so that I can explain a little bit the tag questions. The tag questions are like in the example. If you look at the top, the heading says it isn't cheap. Is it? Is it is a tag question. This is only confirm my opinion. For me, I think it's not cheap. And I check with you. This is the idea of is it. Then we have the others. Always we're going to imagine like a question. But the structure is like a sentence. Example. If you have a question... This sentence in question, you put, is it cheap? But in tag, we are going to put the question at the end and the opposite of the sentence. If the sentence is negative, the tag is positive. Let's look at another example. Here, health insurance is really expensive. Ah, the sentence is positive. So the opposite at the end, the negative. Now, if I make health insurance is really expensive, if I make this a sentence, I put the auxiliary is, correct? I put is health insurance really expensive? For tag questions is the idea, but we put at the end, at the end, of the sentence, we put the tag question. And remember, negative sentence, positive tag. Positive sentence, negative tag. Don't worry if it's a little confusing. We're going to practice and learn a little bit more. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What is Todd concerned about? Type your answers on our discussion box. Oh, listen to me. I'm always complaining, aren't I? Anyway, how are things with you? Oh, not bad. 
but I'm still not sure what I'm going to do after I graduate. Yeah, it's hard to find a job these days, isn't it? It's not that. I'm just not sure if going to law school was the right thing to do. What do you mean? I only have a few more months before I graduate, and now I'm wondering why I did this. I don't want to be a lawyer. It all seems like a waste of time now. So, what are you going to do? Well, I'd like to move to Mexico and open a coffee shop, but I think my parents would flip. Okay, so what else does he talk about? Let's listen one more time and then you tell listen me. Listen to me. What I'm always complete. Answers on our discussion box. Oh, listen to me. I'm always complaining, aren't I? Anyway, how are things with you? Oh, not bad. But I'm still not sure what I'm going to do after I graduate. Yeah, it's hard to find a job these days, isn't it? It's not that. I'm just not sure if going to law school was the right thing to do. What do you mean? I only have a few more months before I graduate, and now I'm wondering why I did this. I don't want to be a lawyer. It all seems like a waste of time now. So what are you going to do? Well, I'd like to move to Mexico and open a coffee shop, but I think my parents would flip. Okay. So, what else does the man talk Care. about? Colleges. The man's name is Todd. What else does Todd say? He is a few months to graduate, and mm -hmm. he isn't a. He isn't one. No, he don't want to be a liar. He wants to move to Mexico and open a coffee shop. And wow, here... Guadalupe, very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Only one word for the pronunciation. Yes. Lawyer. Lawyer. Excellent. Okay. Very Lawyer. good. Very good. And that is our idea for tag questions. Only to check information. That is the idea. All we do is check information with tag questions. I see we have a little bit of time. We're going to see a little bit of the grammar. Today, we're not going to have time to practice, but we have an idea and we can see a little bit of grammar so that tomorrow we have the opportunity to practice. Hi, welcome back. Let me ask you something. Learning English is easy, isn't it? I thought so. Tag questions for opinions. Affirmative statement plus negative tag. Health insurance is really expensive, isn't it? There are lots of criminals in the city, aren't there? Graffiti makes everything look ugly, doesn't it? Colleges should provide daycare, shouldn't they? Negative statement plus affirmative tag. Child care isn't cheap, is it? There aren't enough police, are there? People don't care about our city, do they? You can't find affordable child care, can you? I will begin the... Now, remember, like what I said, if the sentence is positive, the tag is negative. If the sentence is negative, the tag is positive. How do you know what is the correct tag? the same from the auxiliary. The sentence have the auxiliary is, the tag is. The sentence has the auxiliary should, the tag should. The auxiliary can, can. If the sentence only has the verb, then the auxiliary is going to be do or does, like a normal question. Can't find affordable childcare, can you? I will begin the explanation telling you when to use tag questions. We use tag questions when we expect someone to agree with us or when we're asking for confirmation. This is how tag questions work. When a statement is affirmative, the tag question is negative. For example, learning English is easy, 
isn't it? Learning English is our positive statement. And isn't it is our tag question in negative. We may also do it the other way around. Negative statement, affirmative tag question. Childcare isn't cheap, is it? I also want to explain that when we use be as the main verb, be is also used in tag question. Similarly, we use the same model in the main clause and the tag. For example, we should pay our taxes, shouldn't we? However, simple present and past verbs use the auxiliary verb in the tag. For example, graffiti makes everything look ugly, doesn't it? You found affordable childcare, didn't you? Hi, I'm sure you understood this topic, didn't you? In case you didn't, feel free to ask your teacher and watch the explanation if needed. Okay. So, before we finish, let's review one more time the tag and the For confirmation. This statement plus affirmative tag. As you can see, the function is to check the information. Always the auxiliary in the sentence is the auxiliary in the tag. If the sentence does not have an auxiliary, then we go for the verb. The verb is any verb in present, then we use the auxiliary in present. For example, do or does. If the auxiliary is in uh, sorry, if the verb is in past, for example, graffiti made everything look ugly, then it would be did, the auxiliary in past. So always a go according to the auxiliary. If no auxiliary, look at the verb. The verb in present, do or does. The verb in past, did. Is that okay? Yes, it, it's okay. Okay. Don't worry. It's for us to get an idea because tomorrow we're going to practice. Tomorrow we're going to continue with Unit 5. Remember, this week is our last week. So the idea is tomorrow we're going to go with 5, practice it, and then finish Unit 5. Then this gives us the opportunity on Wednesday to have a review and do the final exam. And if we don't finish the final exam on Wednesday, we have Thursday to complete or Thursday to talk. I prefer to have a little bit of extra time and not, oi, oi, we have to finish. No. If we finish Wednesday, great. If not, no problem. We have more time on Thursday to complete. Okay? Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for connecting. I hope you have a great night and I see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night, teacher. Good night.